when you need the majority of the people to believe that what you want them on is what they want to be on, you have to psychologically control that. David Lincoln Productions. contained in this video is for educational purposes only. Everybody's financial situation is different, so some strategies covered in this video may not be appropriate for you. Trading in leverage products is risky and should only make up a small part of an overall investment strategy. To become a better trader, you need to take personal responsibility for any trading losses. Views of people being interviewed are not necessarily endorsed by this channel. We try to present many opposing views and let you decide. David is not a licensed financial advisor and is not trying to sell you anything. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello, uh, welcome to the show, and uh, today I have with me uh, Aaron Scott, and um, I reached out to her because we have some differing views on uh, the markets and the future of the markets, and I suppose only time will tell, but um, as we don't, as we can't see into the future, uh, we decide we'll debate a little bit about what we see as happening moving forward in the markets. Does that, uh, does that sound okay to you? It sounds wonderful, uh, David. It's a pleasure to be with you. Um, it's been nice meeting you and, and um, with our chats here, getting to know the different perspectives. So, yeah, let's 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 have some fun today. Nice. Well, um, I saw your videos talking about uh, that the economy is about to crash and um, the markets are going to go down. In your opinion, um, can you talk about that a little bit? All right, so yeah, it, it's a hard one. Um, it's a hard one to see unless you step back, um, as we were discussing last night when we we're getting to know each other. Um, you 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 stated that you even defined your own perspective as being in in a small uh, small little world and a boxed off little world. Um, first off, um, for all your viewers uh, that um, that have never seen me, and I suspect most of them probably haven't. Um, let me share with you my background, give you an understanding of, of who I am and, and what, I'm, uh, what I'm doing and, and my YouTube channel and so, that, so that you have a little foundation of where I'm coming from. I am knocking on 50 years of age. I am a mother and a grandmother. Um, I have, uh, for the first part of my career, worked as a surveyor and civil engineer. Um, not a tough place, uh, not an easy place for a woman to come up in, 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 in all the possible career paths. Uh, generally, our society holds those, um, those uh, careers for the, uh, the male side of things. But um, I did. I liked it. I enjoyed it, and I was really good at it. Um, I spent, um, like I said, the better part of 20 years building a career. Uh, and at the top of my career, I was working in, um, uh, I want to say, uh, the Bay Area, California. I was making nearly 120000 a year as a uh, lead project manager at one of the top engineering firms um, there in the Bay Area. And in 2007, or December of 2007, going, going into 2008, I was, um, quote, unquote, red-pilled. Um, at the top of my market, I watched uh, my industry uh, come literally crashing down with uh, the, the popping of the housing bubble. Um, I continued for a couple years to try and, and uh, salvage my career uh, with, with me watching uh, my income and my job possibilities drop rast uh, drastically. Uh, I went... Um, from the West Coast back to the East Coast uh, because that's where my my family and my, my children and all that were. And I'd just gone through a divorce to go to the West Coast. So I came back and I managed to get a job at another engineering firm there working for um, less than half of the salary that I had in California. 
And over a period of a year and a half, I watched a company that was uh, 15, off, uh, 15 offices strong up and down the East Coast, big in engineering firm, just disintegrate. It just it just came down. Uh, one office after another was closed, left and right. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's simple. And and what I'm talking about is is fundamentals of what uh, generally the man or woman on the street has to deal with. Um, uh, and and my uh, my perspective is from the realistics of it, not necessarily what we're being told. Um, what we're being told on the headlines, uh, on the mainstream media, because uh, reality is when you have to go to the grocery store, how much does that, uh, how much does that head of cabbage cost you? And that's a, that's a big point. I'm going to use this reference several times in our conversation, Dave. That head of cabbage is is a determining factor for the quality of your life because it is what you need to eat. Now, it's just an example, and some of you may or may not like cabbage, but the point I'm trying to make is. The, when you when you get uh, woken up to a, a significant change in your personal paradigm, it forces you to reevaluate things. Now, being as an engineer, the way I am, uh, I have to uh, I have to be a contrarian. Uh, it is it is within my nature to always argue for the worst case scenario. Okay. Uh, and it will come across some of the things I say because people want to want to, they want to see sunshine and you know um, rainbow puking unicorns you know you've seen that reference within the market before people want to see that they want things to be good and I understand that but the the fundamentals are the things that I look at and what are fundamentals fundamentals are foundations so being around construction all of my life in engineering. Uh, you have to go, okay, let me back up and look at the whole house. Not just how good is the foundation footer, but what is the soil underneath it like? What does this entire hillside look like? Is it possible um, we've got structural issues with, with the hillside? I mean, we as a people have built ho homes in some of the most precarious places, and, and we've all seen them. Houses built on cliffs, houses built next to rivers that flood. We've done a lot of things that... um aren't very well thought out. So when I was um, abruptly woken up by the economy in 2008 and 2009, that's when I started paying attention to it. Uh, we'll talk a little bit today about about some technical stuff um, in the charts and stuff, which I'm sure, Dave, you're, you're, you're going to want to um, uh, dissect, and I'll, I'll give you all the room to support your, your stuff, but the point um, I'm getting at with the technicals is in order to understand what's going on, I had to step back and really look at the bigger picture, which means I had to really educate your, educate myself about um, about money because I didn't understand it. Uh, you know, here I was, I had done everything I was told to do. I owned multiple properties. I, I had a really good income. I had um, so many things going for me, and in, in what seems like the blink of an eye, it all vanished. It all vanished in my world, and it all vanished in a lot of people's world. Not everyone, but those of us who did have have to deal with the issues and, and the consequences of where we were had, had positioned ourselves, especially financially, uh, we, we had to look at it, and we had to educate ourselves, and that's what I did. In doing so, from my contrarian perspective. What I observed through 2010 and 2011 into 2012, and as these years have gone on, as the, is that the powers that be, the money managers, the, the, the Federal Reserve, the, the central banks, and the um, politicians that cohort with them, did not truly fix the problem. Therein lies the big issue. And as an engineer, looking at the construction of our economy, I saw major structural faults occur. We, our house got rumbled. You know, we, we all felt it. We all knew what was going on. But nothing truly got repaired. We, we, we just started printing money. We, you know, the, you know, the banks kept doing the same thing that they were doing before. And there is an old, uh, 
old adage or phrase, you know, um, when all you have in the toolbox is a hammer, everything becomes a nail. And, well, guess what? They've been printing and printing and printing. The reason you saw such a, mm, a kind of warning, um, shocking kind of video that you picked up on, Dave, is because from your perspective, you're seeing things on the on the day-to-day -day movement. And right now, it doesn't look too bad from your perspective because you've got a lot of upside that you've been looking at for a long time. For me, I needed to I need to look back and see, you know, why even though it was supposedly on the upside, we had this big uh, earthquake that happened. It was it was for me to understand what just occurred and why it changed my life because I lost all the houses I had, I lost my career, and I lost um, lost a lot of things. And so I did I did some research, Dave. I, I went back and I started looking things from a long term perspective. And I'm going to tell you, I mean, I'm very learned about a lot of this because I've been intentionally studying it, but I'm no expert. Um, I am still learning on a day to day basis. And for your subscribers, the ones that work with you and follow you, hold on just a second. Sure. You're, yeah. You're, yeah, I, you're following this perspective of the markets and, and your hope that your investments will continue to go on. I'm going to make a suggestion for your subscribers. And, and, and it's to me, you know, I can't reinvent the wheel. And when somebody does something so well, um, you know, there, there's no need to redo it. So I'm going to give kudos to somebody who, who has put together some of the best presentations when it comes to understanding our monetary system and how it works and his name is Mike Maloney and and he um, he he's a uh, owner representative of goldsilver.com he put together starting back in 2011 or 2012 a series of videos called hidden secrets of money and I'm gonna greatly encourage um, all of your viewers, those who, who have not had a chance to see it, please go watch the entire series. It's going to take a while because there's a lot of information to absorb. But he has put this information into a perspective that is easy for the common person to grasp. Because you know, I don't understand, uh, the people behind the monetary system have intentionally made our system confusing. You know, Dave, for as much as you've had to deal with taxes, just how... Uh, and crazily impossible is to file taxes and to deal with the different tax codes. The whole point of it is to keep you off your feet and um, off balance so that you can't see the bigger picture. You're too busy trying to stay on your toes to dodge uh, the, 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 their rules of the game so that you can um, so that you can um, uh, not go under like I did and and it's challenging and it keeps you from from focusing so with with my understanding I had to reevaluate things and I started relooking at all of our systems from an engineering standpoint uh, after several years years of trying desperately to uh, rebuild my career I, I put out resumes by the thousands. Many of you may remember back in the um, in 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 the 2009, 2010. Oh, um, uh, Barack Obama, uh, then president, um, supposedly put together a huge amount of um, government jobs that were supposed to be put out there. This was another part of the red pill I had to swallow. Uh, essentially. Um, they posted, and I went, I mean, for, for months and months and months at a time, I went to all the government websites and uh, applied for all these positions. And I got to talk to a lot of the um, people who were, um, you know, surveys, because it was, you know, as a surveyor, I was applying at the BLM, um, Bureau of Land Management, the, um, uh, the Forestry Service, um, I, you know, all the major government um 
agencies that would use my kind of skill sets. And unfortunately, what I was told by a couple of these, um, a couple of these guys is, um, yeah, uh, they told us to put the ads up. They posted the ads, but they have not given us permission to actually hire people yet. Wait a second. But Obama's saying that, you know, he's fixing the economy. Well, didn't happen. Um, you start to you start to see the lies. You start to when you start to fight through this from a position that I was in. You start to see that it's not really there. Now, Dave, with with your um, what with what you've been focused on, and um, uh, forgive me for uh, approaching it from this perspective, but the tunnel vision that you've kind of looked at at the stock market. Our country has been trained to look at that just as it has been trained to uh, look away from the real assets that provide value. Um, you know, we, we've, seen, we've seen the jobs um, pulled away from our country and sent to China and, and to the east, to Thailand and, and, and Vietnam and all these other countries um, where the, the labor's cheaper. Um, America no longer produces uh, anything like what it used to back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, where we were uh, a very booming economy, our economy has shifted. And because of that, uh, you have to look at the under underlying fundamentals. We are a consumer economy. And as long as we see numbers going up, um, we have belief and faith in this thing called um, uh, the, the stock market or what I refer to and others refer to as uh, digital illusions of wealth. Uh, because it, quite simply, uh, if, if some of the things occur that have been suggested, um, such as EMPs and, and grid, um, grid problems, grid down, because uh, we, we'll, we'll talk about like, you know, uh, the cryptocurrencies, where's our, where's our monetary system going, you know, uh, we'll, we'll get into those kinds of things, but you have to have technology, and our, our, our grid system is, is, is very fragile. Um, if you pay attention to any of the news and headlines about what's going on uh, with with some of the conditions, I mean, you, you, you see it with our uh, infrastructure, you know, our roads. Everything is getting old. Everything in our country has not been repaired. Uh, a lot of the things that were promised by Obama when it comes to um, putting money into our infrastructure, it never happened. We didn't fix our bridges. We didn't fix our, our grid system. So it's all weak, and we're sitting on a very fragile system. And all it takes is one little thing to, to upset uh, that apple cart, to, to undermine what foundation you think you have, and for the whole house to come tumbling down. So with, with that, I started trying to help people. I started back uh, when I lost my career. I went and re-educated myself, and I and I went into um, solar. I saw, hey, what kind of technical thing, engineering thing, can I do? And I and I and I took um, took some courses, learned up, got to know how to um, to work with solar. And I started my own company when I moved up to Montana, Scott Solar, and started learning how, uh, not only learning, but installing um, solar and how this grid system worked. I didn't quite know it at the time, but I was like, hey, we, j we know this is, this is an en energy thing and we need to find ways to produce stuff because what we've been told about um, coal and oil is that it's not sustainable and that we need to find other means. So that was, that was my way of greening things up and trying to fix our, our economy on the grander scale. Well, uh, after you know, 60, 70 um, solar projects over the last few years, I've learned a lot more about how this system works. Running and owning your own business um, is also educational when it comes to understanding this economy. Um, I, I started to see that um, it, is, it is not what it is presented to actually go out and start a business, I, I found out how many people really do fail at it. Now, I wouldn't say I failed. I don't have my official business anymore, but I still help people with, with off-grid solar systems. The point I'm getting is, is I've got 
background where I'm watching things from one perspective and another perspective and another, and then I'm learning this new one when it comes to the, the, the technical aspects of the market, and I'm all seeing indicators and triggers of this thing is on a downslope, and it's a long downslope. Hey, Dave, do you still do you still have that um, that chart for the N2 money supply, or can you pull that up? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I, I can. can. I can do that. Yeah. All right, let me let me show you how this is going. You see, it starts way back. What is that in the 60s? Over on on the um, left hand side of the chart, okay. and for the most part, it goes. Uh, fairly sideways all the way to the 90s. What happened in the 90s that changed things? Uh, early 90s, right when Clinton came into office. Do you remember? Um, let's see. Um, well, the internet bubble started. All the internet companies. It, that started. That started too. The other. The other two factors that caused this money velocity to start increasing were two things. One is uh, we entered a demographic boom, which means the baby boom generation was, was accelerating in its spending of money. Most of the baby ge boom generation had gotten out of uh, gotten out of um, uh, college. They they had been working a while. Um, they were um, 40s, early 50s, and some 60s. And and you had a massive expenditure uh, coming out of the pocket pockets of a lot of people. The other issue that occurred, if you remember, was uh, the removal of Glass Steagall. Mm -hmm. And the, this was ba banking regulations that were um, essentially done away with. The, the stuff that kept the noose or the leash on the banks from, from um, uh, doing stupid things in the market. So what happened? We, we had a massive surge right through the middle of the 90s. And you see right there in the uh, middle, middle of the latter part of the 90s, we had this nice head and shoulders pattern. That head and shoulders pattern, you, you're familiar with what it generally means. A hard reversal in the other direction. And then you see that uh, band right there around 2001. That was the first little uh, dot-com crash. But what happened to the M2 money velocity? Now, before we get any further, uh, what I have not done is define for you what M2 money velocity means. Because this is very, very important. It is your economy. It is money changing hands from one hand to the next. It is all about um, how fast a dollar bill goes from me to buy that head of cabbage from you, and then you take that dollar bill and go put a dollar's worth of gas in your vehicle and so on and so forth. Okay. The faster money moves, the better your economy, supposedly. Supposedly. Not uh, not entirely, but generally, what you want move money money to move, and that's what the Federal Reserve is uh, trying to uh, attempt to get. Now, after the um, after the 2001 crash, you see we go we start to turn back up through 2004, five, and six. It starts to come back up. Why? Because the Federal Reserve started. Uh, changing regulations when it comes to housing. We started, uh, the bank started lending money like crazy uh, at, at lower and lower rates uh, with lesser and lesser requirements. And we know all about the uh, savings and loan debacle that occurred. When that started to roll over, look what happened to money velocity. All through 2008, 2009, money velocity continued to crash. And it has gone down and down and down. Now, towards the end of 2010, we started uh, massive amounts of unprecedented, never done before in, in the history of mankind, digital printing of money. Mm -hmm. We went up a little bit more and we caught a little bit of bounce, but that little bounce didn't last very long and it continued to crash. 
and has been through 14, 15, 16, 17, and now as we're going into 18. Now, what does that tell you? If you see how low we are, that is how little money is moving through our economy. People are spending less at Walmart. People are, 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 are the, the money's just not moving. It, and, and the Federal Reserve's own website shows you. It shows you right there. Now, here's where we're going to go with a couple of the references that I shared with you earlier. Okay, you see that little uptick down there in the very bottom right corner. Yeah, that one right there, that little bit of uptick. That's a little scary. And let me tell you why. Let's go back to uh, that head of cabbage. Right now, you can go to the store and, and, and uh, yes, some food prices have gone up, but you've heard a lot of screaming about the potential with the money printing for hyperinflation to come about. It hasn't yet. Therefore, a lot of people think, oh, yeah, everything's just fine, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not so sure about that. Um, considering that we have a tremendous amount of digital money on the bank's books, uh, many that I follow already believe that we have printed and created all the money that we'll ever need to have the hyperinflation event that is now occurring in Venezuela. Venezuela is going through hyperinflation. If you follow the local news or the, the, the national news and a lot of our mainstream media will not uh, show you that, about this. So you have to go to other media sources on the internet. But that same head of cabbage in Venezuela is like 30, 40,000 Venezuelan dollars right now. Okay. Wow. Uh, you know, in 2008, Zimbabwe, you may have heard about that. They went hyperinflation. Greece is doing it right now. Uh, Ukraine's doing it right now. Uh, we can go through a, a lot of other cr countries where their paper currencies are entering or have entered the hyperinflationary wave that they have to go through and that we all have to go through because of our lack of essentially physical silver and gold backing. Let's go back to this little uptick right here. I believe that based on everything that I've learned that I've and I've been taught, when this next event occurs, the central banks are going to turn on the spigot by either printing more or the banks are going to um, do something to to kick that up, to, to really uh, ramp up the, the, the flow of money. In order to try and save the remaining part of this economy, I think some policy is going to occur, whether it's more QE or uh, whatever it is, to cause that, that speed of money to pick up. And when that occurs, we're probably going to see here in this country the same effects as what's happening in the others. The only reason we haven't seen it yet, Dave, is simply this. Um, we have had the luxury of being the world's reserve currency. We've done that because we have, we have had uh, the uh, petrodollar and because of basically by point of gun, we have forced all the other countries in this world to, to go on to the petrodollar, uh, which means other countries, whether they wanted to or not, had to buy dollars in order to buy oil. Well, a, w a little over a week ago on 26, that changed drastically. Uh, China introduced the petro yuan. Now, up till now, every country that has done that and tried to go back to a gold back or some other monetary system to get off the dollar, what's been the result of that? I don't know. Ask Saddam Hussein. Ask uh, ask Gaddafi. Ask these ask these Middle Eastern countries that um, were supposedly terrorist countries, but we just went in there and wiped them out and 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 by point of gun said, you're not going to do this. It's um, it's a hard one to look at. Like I said, there are so many different things that you have to uh, make yourself aware of in order to in order to um, in order, in, in order to really get the big picture, the big understanding. So 
let me do this with you now. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to take some, and this is a Google image. So anybody who, who's watching the video now, please, um, you can pause it and you can go look at this. If, if it does not um, come up on your screens well enough, um, let's see. David, can you confirm that you see that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm sharing my screen. What we're going to do is we're going to walk through this uh, cute little image that was put together, and I don't know by who, but uh, it's called the Wall Street Cheat Sheet. And you can Google this image. It's really easy to find. But basically, it talks about market cycles. Okay? I want you to look at that, and I want you to notice something, because if you can see my cursor, it is my belief that we are sitting right here. Now, I could be wrong. Uh, for your sake and all of those who do have their life savings and in, invested in into the, the current stock market, the ones that have been forced to via 401ks, 457s on all these different Roth IRAs and stuff, you know, unfortunately, um, it may not be good for you. It, it may not because based on the cycles that I'm seeing, I believe that the stock markets are sitting right here because we have had all of these issues, these emotional states transpire up until now. We started out back in 2009 at disbelief at where that cycle had just come from. We had come down hard. And then in 2010 and 2011, it started to get a little hope. Hey, yay, everything may be safe. 2011, we had a few jitters and it came back down. But then it started marching up and up and up and up. And my real question to you and to everybody who is invested, what truly gives that market value? The only thing that truly gives that market value is our belief systems that it has value. And that's a good thing because we need to believe in what we're doing. But that is a, that's, that is a cycle as well. Our belief systems and understandings of what we, what we uh, want to invest our, our heart, minds, and souls in is a cycle. And those things change because if you look at history, like I say, go back, please, please go back and watch Hidden Secrets of Money, all the episodes, because they are the most succinct um, expression of what has gone on in monetary history, which none of us are taught. So we go through this optimism, uh, this belief, and this thrill, and I think that carried us all the way up into somewhere around the 2015, 2016. In 2015, we were getting very toppy because let's just look at logic. Dave, uh, if we were and referred to uh, quite frequently within the mainstream media as being in a bubble in 2007, 2008, mm -hmm. it was, it was confirmed. It was, everybody agreed that that was the case. Then why would we not be in a bubble now? Because valuations have gone high. P.E. ratios are higher than they've ever been. Ever. What makes a stock 25, 30 times its earnings? It, it, throughout most of our uh, market histories, generally, you know, seven to, seven to ten times is, is about average. And when you get down to three to four, then generally it's considered a good buy. But we're at the top of that. Now, after Trump got elected, because he's a business guy, and I, you know, I'm not going to get into uh, the politics of it because I'm not a Trump supporter. I am apolitical or non-political for that matter. I don't really care about the politics because they don't serve us the way they should. But Trump gets elected, right? Mm -hmm. And what happens? The market goes up, 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 straight up for almost a whole year, or a little over a year. It went straight up. Last year, you couldn't have a 1% correction in the market. It just went up day after day. Is that normal? No, it's not. It is 
the euphoria stage. Well, February comes along, and uh, or, or or January um, and February, and all of a sudden something starts to roll over, and we start to break some technical support from the technical side of things, and we roll over, and we get two major signals sent to the to us. Dave, you remember me telling you last night, fr uh, Friday, February uh, uh, 2nd, 666 points. Yep. Monday yep. comes along and it goes down 6.66%. Is there a coincidence? No. Dave, you're, we're, we're talking about some good basic information here. There's other very scary information. Um, I don't think we're going to go there on, on this particular topic. Maybe later we can, but the point is um, we got some really evil people in charge of our system. Um, and a lot of people aren't going to want to believe it. And most of the people who have awoken to some of the um, corruption that is within our system um, have found out some very, very scary things um, when it comes to the um, corruption. Like I said, we're, we'll, we'll stay away from that topic today because it, it will get touchy. And um, I, want to, I want to stick to the, the, the mathematical engineering side of things. So here we go. Uh, we get some signals sent to us. There are messages, and I believe that was right here in this section of that chart. And then for the last two months, we've rolled over like this, right here in this section, okay? And like I said, we are right here in this point. What I suspect is we are ready to start going down this big slope downwards, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, on the other hand, on the other end of the cycle of things, I believe the precious metals or the monetary insurance is down here because, quite frankly, the money that I put into the precious metals is quite depressing, as you can see down here. I believe it is very uh, depressing to see that I bought ounces of silver for $35, $40, and now I couldn't sell them at your uh, pawn shop for you know, 16 you know that kind of thing. But let's let's go on here. I'm I'm setting up the the uh, the scenario for you. Let me close this one, and I'm going to bring up. Um, here we go. This is uh, Ned Dania. Many of you, uh, your subscribers, are going to be very familiar with this. And again, I'm going to give you a disclaimer. I am only sharing with you my mathematical engineering perspective on what I'm seeing here. Uh, I don't feel confident enough to day trade, and because I truly believe that this market is in a highly overvalued state, um, I don't like to put my my investments into things that um, that are overvalued because at some point in time they will correct to um, to not only to normal value or average value, but they will shoot past that and they'll go. Um, to the other side of the pendulum swing, which means they will they will go undervalued, which means stocks are likely to go way low, and this is potentially going to last for many many years. But let's let me take this to the 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 big the big um, screen here. Now you can see this is the Dow, and, and let me zoom out here. If I can, I may have to change it. I'm, I'm trying to show some perspective, and I've got the one-hour chart, but it's hard to get the big picture. I want to show you some support lines. Uh, most of your uh, subscribers understand a lot of the different technicals from the Elliott Wave to uh, the Fibonacci's and all that. Um, uh, I'm not an expert on it. I'm still starting to wrap my head around that, but one thing I do get is support lines, Okay. And what I've been watching, and the reason why I put these uh, last couple of videos out over the last couple of weeks is I see us compressing down to this one point of inflection. And I see it via the support line. So you've got a major overall support right here that we are currently testing, as you can see, testing that. Now, when... When, when a price of an item is in this scenario, uh, generally you are in a bull market if you're continuing to make higher highs 
and higher lows. Well, for the last few months, we've been making lower highs and lower lows. And every time the market tries to test upper head over resistance, it runs into problems. I was originally looking at this because I'm concerned about this area right here, okay? Because it is set up as a major support. And if this support breaks, then it will be that free fall that I was showing you on that Wall Street cheat sheet. So right now we've managed to break up and you can see where we've tested this line several times. Uh, and it looks like this is the third time we're testing out. Okay? Mm -hmm. You notice it's, it's, it's real, real funny the way these, these, these lines work, the way this stuff is um, coming together. I'm not going to say uh, I understand it fully, but, you know, you, you, you catch these touch points, and then you see where we had a little trouble right here, breaking through it. And then we get up to this line and we struggle through it. And then we come up and we come down and bounce off of it. And then we punch through, go back up, struggle a bit more, come down, touch this one, come up, struggle, come down, and then go back up. Uh, my suspicions are we're going to roll over. For those of you who are in the market, yeah, I would hope for your sake that it continues to go up because it needs to in order to um, in order to stay in its long-term bull market. However, again, this is just the last few weeks and the last few days. I want to take you, I'm going to change the, the time frame here. I'm going to take you out to the four-hour chart so that we can start to see what I'm talking about. And I'm going to zoom out far enough so that you can really see how this almost perfectly overlays that cheat sheet sh chart and we we start coming up all last year and then early this year we stepped out and we broke down right here is February 2nd right here is February 5th and then the next day we had a lot of bouncing right here and then what did we do roll over and now we're coming down to what I believe could be that point where we could break through. Because the fundamentals in our economy are uh, not what they are put off to be. Because um, I'm watching um, conditions on the street, people that I know um, uh, just, not, just not having it. I mean, if, if, if our economy truly had a strong foundation, you would be getting headlines after headlines of um, Sears opens or hires 5,000 more. Um, Apple puts out, um, uh, you know, opens new um, facility hiring so many thousands of people. But you're not seeing that. The, the, the headlines we've been getting is Sears and Kmart are closing. Uh, this store, shut, uh, this company is shutting so many stores. That company is shutting so many stores. Um, this kind of um, negative news, negative news, negative news. That's been happening for the last few years, which tells me I don't think we're in the middle of the up wave. I think we've rolled over and we're about ready to really go down further. So that's the bigger picture. Um, huh, it's a lot to say. <laughs> And you've been patiently quiet. Thank you, Dave. I'm going to shut up for a few minutes and let you fill in your perspective. Tell me your thoughts, and you give me your argument. Well, well th thank you, Aaron. Thank That's you, Aaron. a lot That's to, a lot uh, to digest. Um, and uh, why don't I go ahead and uh, talk about a couple of things that I uh, I kind of agree with that you just talked about, and then I'll talk about a couple of things that I sort of disagree with. And let me see if I can actually stop sharing the screen for a second so that I can yeah, see I'm gonna you stop. again. I'm going to stop sharing mine. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um. Yeah. Um. Thank you for uh. Thank you for all that. And um. There's a lot of stuff that we are are not so far apart on. Uh. And to start with, just the market. The stock market in general, not representing the United States uh, and the, what's happening in this country, and that that's definitely true. The stock market is like, it's it's like eighty or ninety percent rich people's money. It doesn't really reflect 
the public, and it doesn't necessarily reflect what's happening in the in the economy. It can be very separate from that, and it can follow its its own rules a, a, a lot of the time. Um, so um, I'm I'm 100% with you there. Um, the um, as far as uh, w that chart that you put up on the economic cycle, I'm sure my viewers have seen some rendition of that many times, and some of them are more comical than others, where it will show someone panicking or, or trying to buy it at the top and trying to sell it at the bottom, vice versa. And um, I know a lot of viewers will uh, totally be agree with you 100% that we are right where you say we are in that chart, having kind of like, uh, you know, reached the height, and now we're kind of on the downside and uh, looking to, and, uh, you know, looking to break support. You know, everybody talks about this thing called the 200-day uh, the moving average, which is basically like um, this line that uh, we've kind of flirted with over the last couple of days, breaking through. We did break through it, and then uh, mid, mid last week, we had like three rally days in a row where we got up above it again. Um, we look at not just the Dow that, that you were showing, but also some other uh, index indices like the NASDAQ and the, uh, the, the mm -hmm. SPX. But they all uh, show basically the same thing right very now. Similar. Yeah, very yeah. similar. Um, and I also agree with you totally that uh, everybody should check out the Mike Mahoney videos because that is some uh, very uh, uh, interesting stuff about money. And uh, I, I will try to link to those below. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hey, secrets of money. It's it's it's, it's incredible. Um, as far as um, P/E ratios, I am not a real big. Uh, I, I'm not really into uh, data data as far as like um, this or that indicator. So I'm not really that into P/E ratios. However, um, if you do look at a chart over the last. Uh, I don't know, 20 years or something, you would see that uh, PE ratios got really high in 2008 up to like 80, 60, you know, in the, in the dot-com thing, PE ratios came from like a historical average of about 20 all the way up to over 100 briefly. Uh, in like 2002, 2003 also, they got up to around 60. And it, actually, if you look at them now, they are lower than they were during that period of time. They are like just over 20. So... Um, they're not showing right now the, uh, and, and, and the other thing that, that I would say as far as that I agree with you on is, is a lot about, uh, what you've talked about with the crumbling infrastructure of the United States, the, uh, the lack of job creation, the, you know, however much good news they tend to give us on television, uh, the average person isn't doing so great and they don't. They're not seeing any of this translation, and it, even if the stock market were to go up, they don't participate. You know, it's the it's the few. We've also seen, uh, you know, the um, wealth being concentrated among just a few people in in the U.S., and uh, th that's troubling as well. Uh, what I would say, as far as uh, w my question would be, uh, well, for one thing. Um, I agree that, you know, it, we're kind of in decline maybe as an empire, but why exactly now would you say it? And, uh, and uh, I, p I would point to, like, when we, talk, when we talk about a guy like Mike Mahoney or Peter Schiff or a lot of these guys that were advocating buying silver and stacking it, uh, you know, we did have that point that you alluded to where, like, silver got to 35 and there, that was, like, the height of silver stacking because a lot of people made money because it, it went up a lot. But since then, and gold got to like 1900 at one point. But since then, like gold and silver are down. And I think gold's at like 1300 now. But I would think that, there you go. Nice. But I would think that yeah. if we had hyper, you know, if, if prices were going up and the dollar was becoming, more dollars were flowing into the market, that would be reflected in the gold price going up because it would take more dollars to to buy a bar of gold. Um, and I, I just correct. go ahead. You're you're correct. Um, that that's the assumption, and that's um, what a lot of people who've been in the markets uh, truly believe. 
However, uh, and this is a hard topic because a lot of people are very, very opinionated on it. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to state this as a matter of fact. Uh, when you're in control of the system and you need people, remember what I said, it's about belief. It is about belief system. When you need the majority of the people to believe that what you want them on is what they want to be on, you have to psychologically control that. Now, that means manipulation. And uh, I'm not going to, let's not do any arguments about it. I'm just telling you that it is manipulated. All things are controlled and manipulated. And all I got to say is, you know, uh, President's Working Group on Markets, the Plunge Protection Team, they, they go right in and do it. The, 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 the banks have, and if you do your homework, and, and people who don't want to believe this are not going to go do their homework because it will disrupt their belief system, and people don't want to lose their belief system. But the point is, over the last couple of years, the banks have been fined for this over and over, manipulating the price of silver and gold down, and for manipulating the stock markets up. It is about maintaining the mean, maintaining the belief system. So, David, uh, I, I, you know, I can go in, and it's gotten so blatantly that I see it, and, and can go in and show you on the charts when they manipulate it. They go in now when it, uh, it used to be only on the lowest volume times of trading. You had have somebody come in and put down two billion in notional gold in the middle of the night at market orders. Who does that? Who has the strength to put down that kind of money and drive the price down? Only the sovereigns. Only the governments can do this. Because they want you to continue believing that the gold and silver does not have value and the dollar and the, and, the, and the other currencies do. Now, mind you, again, we're talking about the global picture and, the, and, and the, um, the big picture of what's going on. Go back to Mike Maloney's videos when you were watching The Hidden Secrets of Money, and you're going to see the quote-unquote nails in the coffin. And what he means by this when he talks about it is that uh, the treaties and contracts that are being done through, by other countries that do not include the United States, the One Belt One Road, uh, the the um, uh, what is it, the um, Asian infrastructure banks, and all of these things that the other countries are setting up, and then on top of that, China has just backed its yuan with gold. Now it's not uh, redeemable at this moment because they're waiting for the global currency reset to her happen, but they've done it, and so has Russia. Now, they have not done it with us, and they have not um, uh, put it out publicly, but the contracts are working, and people behind the scenes that deal in large, large gold contracts, people that I watch, and, because they're the experts to me, like Bill Holter and, and um, oh, God, I'm going to lose his name. Um, it'll come back to me. Anyway. Uh, big names who buy big bullion are all saying um, that the there's there's about ready to be a reset in the price of gold because you got to understand if we're sitting at a big monopoly table and that's what this is is this giant monopoly table that all these big players are sitting around as you alluded to yourself Dave when you're wanting to push somebody off the table everybody else starts to play without you eventually to the point where they're working against you. And that's what's going on right now because of the corruption within our country. If if our government had flown true blue and honest without the use of force and kept their 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 their, their money printing, you know, restrained and such, it may be a much different story. But what has every president done here for the last uh, 30, 40 years? They take us to war. They we we we're about death and debt. You know, so we got to be, um, we got to look at this big picture. We, we, we have to stay focused on that, Dave. Well, I definitely agree with you that, um, you know, the government is controlled by the donors to the political parties, and uh, they are about um, making money off war a lot, a, a lot of the time. Um, but I, uh, I go back to the fact that, 
that Mike Mahoney and Peter Schiff and these guys, they've been saying for years that the price of gold and silver are going to explode and it just hasn't happened. And, you know, it, how long can you say that every day that the market's going to crash and gold and silver is going to explode and it doesn't happen before people stop listening to you? That, that, and, that, and, that's and what is problem. now what is now today? I mean, I can see how the market, you know, is, is in a downturn and stuff like that. But what evidence today is going to make people actually go back and say, well, maybe those guys were, were, were right. Because if you say every day the market's going to crash, and then in, on the 1,349th day it actually crashes, and you say, I told you so, that's not really that meaningful. You know what I mean? I know, you know, you're right. It, this, all right. Here's a challenging thing for all of us who have been the watchmen, so to speak. Let me address that point uh, rather specifically. It is hard to understand time in these cycles because you and I are human beings and some of these cycles extend beyond our existence. It is hard for us to comprehend that, to that time. Yes, being in the prepper and the homesteading communities now uh, for the last 10 years in a big way, uh, I've met a lot of old guys that started prepping back in 71, um, 71 when we came off the gold standard. They were, oh, it's going to collapse. And it almost did in 79 and 80. For, fortunately, back then, they still had the ability to control certain things. This time, I don't think they're going to be able to control certain things. Um, and for all intents and purposes, you know, the table is going to have to be wiped clean, a clean slate and start over, which means everything goes to zero except real tangible assets. And, and the reason why... I believe that so strongly uh, is because, uh, like, let's let's just toss into the cryptocurrencies. I think that technology and the blockchain technology is incredible stuff. It's gonna it's gonna free us up from a lot of corruption potentially. It has the potential to free us in a lot of ways unless the central controls get a hold of it. However, you can't have a, a, a cryptocurrency. Uh, you can't. Pull it back out here again. This computer that we're talking on cannot work unless you have this. Those stock trades and charts and everything you look at cannot exist unless this is this is there. You need silver for all of this. Let me take it. Let me take it to a different step because I'd really like um like to share share a little bit um, while we're here today of where I've gone with this. Okay. Sure. I don't understand the time frame. All I'm trying to do and the reason why I put these videos up for, you know, people like you was to say, "Hey, I'm seeing indicators that look like we're getting really really close." Now, to be honest, I I'll, I'll I'll be honest, um the verbiage of the title of those videos, you know, global stock market crash hours away and the one I just did uh, maybe only minutes away, are intent for one purpose, to gain your attention. Why? Because that's what we do. That's what we click on. That's what YouTube uses to put in front of your face. And if I want to get my message out, i got to work within that system to get your attention. Now, here's the thing. You remember that old adage, Dave, uh, it's better to be, um, you know, five days, five weeks, five months, five years early than five seconds late. Here's the thing, for all of you that are going to watch this video, I'm sorry it hasn't happened the minute that I said it has. The intent is for you to go, oh, whoa, maybe uh, I need to look at something. I mean, that's what, you know, when I first started following Alex Jones, um, that's what he is really good at. He's really good at grabbing a hold of you and shaking you hard and saying, wake up problem I have is eventually you need to clear, have a clear head and look at things and have a discussion like we are. Look at some of the facts and kind of wrap your head around things. And So I don't follow him anymore the way I used to, but he served a purpose. Mm -hmm. He served a very good purpose to get me help in, in many of the ways to get me to, to start looking at things and looking at this big picture. Timing is something that we're very, very... Um, uh, 
challenged at. We all are. We're, we're, none of us are going to pick the exact top. None of us are going to pick the exact bottom. If you, Dave, and your uh, most of your normal guests um, are probably because they're traders, have all understood certain concepts, and the idea is to to buy low and sell high, right? Okay, so let's talk about that for a second. Buy low, sell high. Well, why don't we ever flip our thinking around into, hey, sell high, and then look for something to buy low? Because right now, stocks are high. Yeah. Why wouldn't it be good timing? And the strategy that many of your other um, uh, guests might be able to um, back me up on this is the technique of which to do so, and that is to as that market's climbing, 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 when you're getting near that top, you want to start selling before you get there, as you get there, and as you're rolling over, right? You want to let it go little bits in it. Why? Because if you hold a massive position, you don't want to dump it because you really want your gains, right? So you want to you want to feed it out and start changing the position. That's what the insiders have been doing. So let's go to the let's let's go to um where I took this and what I'm doing with my channel. Yes, I have been putting out these warning videos, but it's because I can get um, subscribers. And a matter of fact, in the last week, I've gotten like 600 new subscribers like that, the most I've ever gotten with these That's amazing. videos. I mean, it, is, it is quite um, uh, wonderful. You go through and read the comment section, and I've got a lot of people going, Right on, Aaron. We're ready for it. We're tired of this old game because we can't win at it. We're ready to clean the table and start over. Yes, it's going to be rough. But why did I do my channel the way I did? was because most people, Dave, don't have the tenacity like you and I do to dig down into these topics and really um, unearth the, the information that's going to best affect our lives. So because I'm an engineer, because I have um, so much other wonderful skill sets and knowledge, I started asking myself this question. And then this question I started asking in a lot of the prepper groups that I started doing talks about. And my focus has been about uh, hardening your personal systems, um, your power system. That's why that's a big one. Power, power, energy, energy. It drives us. Having a way to produce your own energy um, is invaluable. It, 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 there's, there's, there's nothing that can have more value than you having the power to amplify the things you want. Otherwise, everything is by hand. If I have electrical power from the sun, I can, I can do anything with the technology that we can. I can run this computer with, with it. But if the grid goes down, everybody who's attached to it is dependent on that system making it. So I started sharing videos with people on how to get off grid with different levels of their systems. Um, and I re-engineered my system. And I actually live that to show you, and I show you inside my world of how I'm you know, cooking my food on a wood stove, the fact that I built a wood stove, the fact that I put a water jacket in the wood stove that has a thermal siphon system in it that uh, allows me to heat water with a few sticks of wood. I mean, we used to have these systems until we got the power grid installed. It's a harder life. It's not easy for most people to comprehend, going back to some, some of those things. It's, um, it gives you a different perspective. But in my videos, the primary thing I focus on is food production, because quite frankly, and and I don't think any one of your viewers or my viewers or anybody is going to argue too hardly about the fact that the food that they have been producing and providing for us is not good. Hmm. It's not good for us, uh, and we've gone away from um, we've gone away from. Uh, independence in our own food production it used to be and you're you're near the same age as i am there dave um our our moms and dads and our grandparents they had gardens and they canned food right, right? yep well i do right now i produce 
better than 92, 93, maybe 95 percent of my own food. Wow. Everything wow. from everything from herbs for teas and medicinals and culinaries uh, to the vegetables, um, my chickens, my turkeys. I was um, raising up in Montana hogs and goats, and as soon as I can get a piece of land here, I'm going to be um, bring those animals in as well. And the idea is this, and this, this is a question that I asked myself, and I started asking everybody in these prepper groups, and that is, okay, all this scary, frightful stuff, now you got to think. We want you to think. I want you to think, because that's the only time that you're going to really, truly take action for yourself, is when you start thinking about it. So the question is this, you go home tonight, and all of a sudden headline comes across one of the mainstream media or anywhere else. Uh, I saw some headlines on Sunday that made me go, oh, that's why I put out that second video. The war cards are being, uh, the sabers are being rattled. The war cards are being talked about. You go home tonight and they pulled off this, this next uh, false flag war starting event. And all of a sudden a bomb goes off in New York and it wipes out all the systems that you're staring at on a monitor every day. You get up every day and you're staring at all this stuff that's coming out of two places, Chicago and, and New York, mostly New York. And we have one of those events take place. It's happened. It yeah. happened. It yeah. happened 17 years ago. It happened. And it can happen again. How quickly would things come undone? Most stores and most people only have three days worth of food in their home. Well, my focus has been, okay, here's the thing. You know, food storage, you know, for emergencies and water storage, they're, they're common things. You know, we don't even have to talk about, you know, the financial end of it. All you got to do is ask people in southern Florida and ask the people in Houston, you know, Events are happening that could disrupt your world. So making your systems sustainable uh, only makes you a stronger person and makes you capable of standing on your own two feet given any kind of scenario. So I've been focusing on those systems with my channel, showing people uh, what things they could build and do and, and primarily with the food and and and. and being able to use multiple techniques in, in order to produce stuff so that even if you're in an apartment, you can still grow food. You know, uh, right now where I'm currently at, I'm on, on a small lot, a little 50 by 150 lot, but I am doing a series of um, showing you how I can produce the majority of the food that I'm going to eat for the next year right here on this property. You can do it inside of a city lot. That's been my focus, Dave, is to, to give people the actual real action steps they can take so that this big shocking video of global market crash coming in 24 hours or two minutes or whatever, they can actually turn and pivot from that bad feeling into a, okay, here's something I can go do with it. This is something I can actively do to make me... Um, uh, less susceptible to the systems that I've become so dependent on. And in order to encourage that, I've had some fun here in the last um, few days because I've had so many more wonderful subscribers that have supported me because I've gotten so much. Um, and it is hard, you, you know, to, to, to present this because people want to knock it down. They really want to tear you down and uh, no, 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 you don't know what you're talking about because they have their belief systems. Most of the people that supported me so well, I decided that I was going to throw a little contest and give back um, to those who wanted to participate. I've got a little, um, I'll call it a treasure hunt on my channel. I saw um, that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and, and a little giveaway of silver. Uh, it's nothing huge, but it, it's, it's for fun. And what I did was I, I hid in my videos, I hid little, uh, little eye cards up in the upper, you know, you know how they work click on them and and if you go and if you find one and you click on it and you give me a thumbs up and a comment and it, the link will take you to another video where you can give it a thumbs up and write me a comment and tell me where you found it and the timing of where it's at so that I know you know you, you're you really truly found it 
you'll 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 win essentially a a tenth ounce of a nine nine fine uh, a walking little liberty and um, not that it's um you know going to save your financial world but it's a little fun a little give back and of the ten that I've hidden um, I told you that I've got a special interview coming up next month. Uh, between now and then, we're going to give it a month. Um, whoever finds them, I'll do a drawing for them, and um, I'll give away a, a really neat um, uh, silver bar. It's about, like I said, I can't remember, it's four or five ounces. I still have to get it, and it's in a storage facility, uh, so i got to go get it. But pretty neat, shape of a dollar. So how so, many of those have you, uh, have you awarded so far out of the ten? Any uh, of them none, are? None, okay. None. None, none have been found as of right now. Um, none have been found. I've got Ooh, three. I may have to go on there and start looking today when I get off. <laughs> there you go. I've, I've got 10 of them hidden, but I've got 300 videos, and I'll give you one little hint. They're towards the older videos, so I want people to go dig. The idea is for you to dig. Some of them are placed in you know, the front of the video. Some of them are placed towards the back of the video. Um, but the idea is... Go watch, learn something new about um, systems that you didn't know that you might be able to use or help somebody with, even if you don't incorporate it into your, your own world. And then, and then, um, yeah, uh, share in share in the silver. Have have some fun. You know, let's let's play the game. I suppose my hope, um, <clears throat> you know, let's let's take for as a given that we are in that certain spot in the chart and that stuff does go down from here. I suppose my hope is that, that I'm in for a long enough term that, uh, of course I would like to get out and get in a lower spot, but my hope is that I'm in it for a long enough term that if the market, you know, because we are in, we markets go through cycles. It is going to go down between now and, you know, in my lifetime. So my hope yeah. is that my hope is that, it, it, it goes down and then comes back up again, you know, and I just stick it yeah. out, you know, as opposed to, uh, but of course we would like to, to, uh, you know, to not be in when it's going down and then reestablish when, you know, at the bottom or something like that. Um, but, um, I guess that's what my dad would say, would say to this conversation was that, uh, he, he would just hope that, uh, you know, that we go through, if we go through a recession or something, but th see, that's not, in a sense, that's not really what you're talking about. You're almost talking about like, uh, that almost the whole system might be destroyed in a sense, you know, the, uh, and th that's what, you know, I, I wanted to have somebody on that sort of talked about this whole, I mean, I don't mean to be crude, but they call it the, you know, the, the S hit the fan type scenario that is so... Yeah. It's so prevalent on YouTube, but I think a lot of my uh, my followers are not like YouTube, you know, are not really uh, focused no, on YouTube and haven't may not have heard of that before. But it's 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 a very uh, I would say popular um, a belief out there that that stuff is going to hit the fan sometime soon. And that, and that's you know that's because the people who who have come to that um, understanding and they've had their belief system change they've had it changed for the same reason it changed mine because it the system finally hit me in the wallet and all the other people were that are changing it's it, it this 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 breakdown in the system has hit them in the wallet and right now it's only a, you know only a, a certain percentage of the um uh the population that have been hit that hard However, the rest of the people, um, what is the frog in the pot of boiling water reference? I mean, it, the pot's pretty hot right now, and, and you know, I'll, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the well, pot's it, pretty it, hot. It's interesting how a lot of people will, will take the stance that, like, you know, they'll pick a political party and they'll say, well, it's the other party's fault that all this is happening. Or uh, it's the uh, but you're sort of more saying that it's the system system's fault or it's the establishment that's that's basically, you know, yeah. pulling the it's, strings. It's the, beginning. it's the beginning. And and like I said, th this could be for an entire other conversations. But when you really dive down this rabbit hole and it's it's a scary one to go through. Uh, what you come to find out is that that there are only a small handful, 
and this is this information is public it's out there and it's easily found there are only a small handful of families that control most of this world right. um, mm. Rothschilds Warburgs um, Rockefellers we can go through the the family names but they control it and and when you start to find out I mean we'll, we'll take one little step down that rabbit hole not too far because I don't want to scare everybody but the point is uh, you know every war is a banker's war and uh, for an example um, uh, the, the Nazi armies in Germany uh, were known for their tank brigades right it, I mean history will say uh, Germany had the biggest tank uh, divisions and they rolled all over Europe and they I mean it was advertised how good their tanks were where were the engines for those tanks built Detroit folks Ford Henry Ford ran the contract through his company to build the engines for all of Germany's tanks Americans didn't have a freaking clue as to what our country was doing to support both sides because the bankers were supporting, supporting both sides because money can be made from war wake up folks I mean it, the facts are out there I, 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 I could sit here for weeks and weeks and weeks and dig through all of this little by little but it isn't necessary um, all you need is just that spark to understand this isn't right when you're, you look around and get a real feel for what's going on because only then will you be able to um, um, allow yourself to be red-pilled or wake up in some form or fashion and uh, I'm not saying you're gonna ever have to believe in everything that I say um, as being you know 100 percent fact it is my opinion I share it with you because I only want to improve things just like you Dave I mean you get on here trying to share the best of what you've learned in your life to help improve people's lives mm -hmm. uh, sometimes um, or well let's just put it like this remember what I was saying to you last night Dave um, as an engineer I have to I am forced to look at things from the contrary you must look at the contrary because if you can prove that the contrary is insubstantiable uh, then then your belief system is strengthened but it means you have to look at the hard evidence that says maybe what you think is right isn't and it's a hard one people don't want to change their belief systems they believe what they believe and and uh, what what I what I truly believe is that the um, the elite of this world uh, the manipulators the bankers yes they've manipulated this bubble in the stock markets up very high but I also believe that they are going to manipulate it down ergo why gold and silver will shoot up so quickly is because not only have they manipulated it down I truly believe that they're going to manipulate it up just as quickly and is hard and there, there, there there's some fundamental reasons for that um, in, in brief um, the whole goal of this game has been to steal the wealth of the people what is the wealth the wealth is real tangible assets and for for um, many generations our American population has had the real money taken away from it and our belief system was to stop believing that it had value and what what easier way to do that is to show you on a daily basis for a longer t period of time that you're capable of sustaining that it has no value as you, you made a mention to me Dave a little earlier ago well it just keeps going on and on and 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 what do you say to um, you know uh, that it hasn't happened yet it you know you've cried wolf you've cried wolf and, and it hasn't happened yet that you go back to that um, chart that that Wall Street cheat sheet and right there at that little bottom you've got that depression and it's, it's capitulation you, 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 you turn it loose and some of us in the um, the gold and silver um, world have watched a lot of 
extremely hardcore people who were um, uh, supporters of um, precious metals literally throw in the towel. When you see that, when you see it posted on on, on YouTube and all the other social media that I'm giving up, I'm selling all my gold and I'm going into cryptos because that's the right up. That's when, uh, that's when I think the bankers know, Hey, we've pushed it as long as we can. That is why I'm seeing all these, um, compression waves in the charts, everything squeezing down to this point of focus. It's the same thing with the, um, with the, with the stock markets. They've all turned in my opinion, turned in there. They've, they've done their first dead cat bounce. You know what a dead cat bounce is. They've done this. And I think we're, we're at the doorstep of when the rest of the world is going to say, okay, it's time to go on the new system folks. And they're going to shut it down. Now the big problem is, um, the Hegelian dialect and that is problem reaction solution. And generally they, um, the elite like to create war, and we go to war as a distraction away from the actual monetary system. And when it comes down to it, the one thing most of us need the best education on is money. And, and we don't got, we don't got it. We just, we just, we just don't got it. When you say, when you say, when you say, when you say red pill, is that a reference to like the matrix? Exactly. You got it. Okay. There's, there's a lot of people using the, using that reference. Basically it is, Red pilling or, or giving somebody the red pill is the hard way of introducing somebody to the truth. Okay. Um, when, when somebody takes the red pill, they are starting to accept that they're, it's, it's like the alcoholic, dude. I mean, you know, the person has been drinking going, hey, man, I'm a drunk. It's the truth. It's admitting to the truth. Because once you can do, do that and you can... Um, Accept that maybe your belief systems aren't correct or won't be correct at some point in time in the future. Then you can start to affect change in your world. Then you have to uh, take responsibility for your actions and change something. And that's why I try and keep it simple with um, with with my subscribers and 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 give them at least the simple things that they could do that are basically life supporting, you know, making sure that you have a good water source or you're connected to somebody who has a good water source. Why would you want to drink uh, city water when, when they're putting chlorine, which is a poison into it uh, and fluoride, which is a poison. Uh, and, you know, yes, you were lied to about these things, but they affect your health. You know, why would you do these things? Why not? improve your life go ahead you were going to say something oh i was just going to say that um you know i had i had a similar similar arc to yours in a sense in that 2000 i was working as a trader and i lost everything and it was it wasn't it was due to an economic turndown once again it was like the uh the dot-com bubble or something actually it was around like 2001 2002 and yeah. you know i had a six-figure job uh and was making all this money and everything was great and I lost everything and uh, it was a it was a it was a big long long hard climb back and uh, I think uh, you know those kind of things are uh, are uh, what define most people's lives not not every you know most people don't have that perfect you know everybody's got everybody's got problems and and uh, and uh, you know it, it it affected me in a different way than it affected you, but it definitely affected me as well. I mean, the, the, that's what's so kind of ironic about the stock market in that it doesn't, it, it doesn't affect most people directly, but it affects people, you know, the economies affect people in a sideways way that they can't control. Yeah, yeah. It, again, it, it, it's back to that, that same point. It, you have to step back so much further than you understand. You really have to step back and step back and keep looking at a bigger and bigger picture to truly, um, to truly start to comprehend it and grasp it. And, you know, yes, you lost it all, but as you stated, well, this thing keeps chugging along and it hasn't really broken yet. And they've managed to pa uh, patch the, the holes in the balloon and it keeps going up. And how, you know, 
how do you argue against something that, you know, most people, well, this is what it is. I see it. Stock market's up, you know. Well, only when you look at hundreds of years of cycles do you understand that, well, yeah, it's up, uh, but let's figure out what history has said uh, indicates when it goes down so that when we're when it's about ready to go down we're ready for it and we're ready to be on the other side of the game when that occurs and uh, you know there's there's been a, an awakening in our country it's it's been a slow prog progress for a while but I think it's really ramping up um, there's gonna be a lot of people who are behind the curve but that is the bell curve you know um, I follow a lot of um, Cliff High's uh, work, uh, and he, he talks a lot about um, the introduction of ideas into society, uh, like with um, I uh, industry, with the technology, and with um, uh, ideas, basically. And you have people fit on this bell, bell curve, and every every wave, whatever, whether it's an idea or, or whatever, that, that hum, humanity um, absorbs, um, moves into, and then moves out of, all follow the same process of the volume of people when it happens. And at the bottom you have uh, the inventors, the innovators, the people who are coming up with new ideas. And that's what happened, you know, like with, with um, the cryptocurrencies through, you know, 2010, 11, 12, 13, into 14. Um, uh, and then we're moving into this stage called the early adopters. And that's the next group of people um, who are going, hey, that's a really cool idea. I wasn't smart enough to do it myself, but I am smart enough to uh, see that that's, that's something I want to do. They jump on the bandwagon, and then we go through this wave of early adopters. And that takes us from, like, the... 0.1% to the 1% and then up to the 2 to 3% and like with the cryptos we're about ready to end, enter this new wave of the, the 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 later adopters into the mass adoption and that's when it goes up that is the cycle it is the same cycle that we just just saw on the Wall Street cheat sheet it is this same understanding and if if you understand that then you know it's got to go down and what you're doing is going through and looking at historical indicators, something that can tell you, hey, uh, no, we're not rolling over the top. We're actually only on a small pullback and we're getting ready to go up because we have not done this, this, and this. Or, yes, we've, we've got these indicators and they're saying um, we have gone over the top and now we're going to go through the down leg of it. And it's, and it's only you know, eight, nine years of my you know, personal research that I even feel reasonably comfortable about, uh, you know, talking about it with you like this, because um, I didn't feel like I knew and understood it. I knew something was wrong for many years, but only now do I feel like I can uh, verbalize it in a, in a way that people can kind of help people wrap their head around. So, Well, as, as you know, being a, a content creator as well, it, it's not easy to come out here and, and have a live conversation with somebody and try to defend yourself and make sense and uh, everything. It, it's it's hard, and I you know I certainly had a little trepidation coming before this interview just because I all of a sudden felt like I had to represent the uh, all of the street or something like that, and uh, I was a little bit. Uh, but you know we're just two people, and I I hope that um, you know we've covered a ton of ground here today, and I hope that. Um, you know, we've just communicated some ideas that people can take back with them and, 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 and think about. And I also hope that people uh, have has in, interest has been picked a little bit to check out your um, your channel because there's there's awesome stuff on there. And as I tell subscribers all the time, you don't have to agree with me 100 percent to get something out of what I have to offer. And it's the same with Erin. You don't have to agree with everything she's talking about here to be able to 
go and check out a lot of the awesome stuff that she has to offer on her channel and pick and choose what 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 is of interest to you i mean this is some serious stuff we're talking about and we we take it seriously and take it to heart but there's also a whole lot of information on the channel that can help you day to day and i encourage everybody to go and check it out i know your voice is dying and i know mine is but i i just <coughs> want to thank you for i'm I'm still uh, very embarrassed that I messed up the opening that way, and uh, uh, but but um, we got back on track, and I, I think this has been uh, useful to people. So I, I want to thank you for coming on and uh, and agreeing to do this with a stranger like me. So thank you. No, it, it you know, uh, I love everyone, and and you know I I can I can put it to you in this context. Um, The better that you can support yourself, the less dependent you are on on the other systems around, the stronger person you're going to be. And the stronger person you are, the more likely you're going to be able to help your neighbor as opposed to depend on your neighbor. And I like to kind of think of it as, um, you know, de-zombifying our, our, our communities uh, because that's, that's what we're talking about um, when, when you have somebody who – is essentially clueless and and an event occurs and they get knocked off their feet you know uh, uh, to to quote um, quote one of the people I follow Gerald Salente he says when when people lose everything they lose it uh, all you have to do is go go to um, some of the YouTube uh, videos out there on on Venezuela and and see what people are doing I mean they need their pets. They've gone through all the zoo animals. They've rampaged everything there because they can't eat. They have mass people leaving. Why? Because their currency collapsed. And that's going to occur here. It's already in the process. Does it happen in two minutes? Does it happen in two days? No. It's What, what it really is is a process. But the sooner you get um, on your feet in understanding this process and changing your own little personal paradigm, uh, the better better person you are. So with uh, with that, um, uh, those who, who, who do want to come check me out, it is um, uh, youtube.com forward slash Aaron Scott, E-R-I-N-S-C-O-T-T. I also have um, a, a Steemit page. If anybody is familiar with Steemit, it, it's, um, it's a new, new platform. I like it um, that you that some of the things that are going on with there where you actually get paid um, cryptocurrencies to to put together good material and post it um, and that is um, uh, esteemit.com forward slash I think it is um, at Aaron Scott solar I think it is and I'll Aaron link Scott. I'll link to that in the description too of the video yeah. so you can just look down below to find those those yeah. references so, Dave this has been a pleasure uh, yeah. I really thank you for, for having me on you've been very cordial considering that you know I am very contrary to a lot of what you talk about I, I appreciate your 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 candor and and um, the way we we've, we've carried on the conversation I think uh, uh, this is this is great and hey we can do this again um, like I said there are a lot of topics that I only you know danced across the top of it and and we could we could really dive in uh, it'd be scary stuff for some people. Um, I don't, you know, they may 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 not like it, but um, uh, or we could focus on on some of the good things. So um, I'm up for another one if you ever ever want to. Sure, sure, sounds good. All right, well, thanks everybody, and um, thanks Aaron, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye now. <laughs>